In this lecture, we are going to cover the acute fetal hypoxia. Remember in crisis, be aware of the danger, but recognize the opportunities. Not finance, not strategy, not technology. It's teamwork that remain the ultimate competitive advantage, both because it's so powerful and so rare. During the normal and complicated labor, the fetus undergoes number of repeated period with reduced oxygen supply. This is caused by the uterine contraction and the consequent reduction in the uterine and placental blood flow. But, adaptive mechanism permit the fetus to achieve a level of oxygen consumption exceeding its needs under a normal condition. And this is, can be done through a different mechanism. Fetal heart rate. We know that the fetal heart rate, what happened during a period of hypoxemia, there will be a deceleration. And this deceleration by itself, it's a form of compensatory mechanism. Where is the demand and the need of the oxygen when the heart is working less in the period of a bradycardia? When there is deceleration, this is require less amount of oxygen. High fetal hemoglobin. We know that the fetal hemoglobin is having high affinity and high capacity for oxygen. And this is provided the fetus with high amount of blood oxygen stores. And this is can delay the anaerobic in a period of reduced oxygen supply. Metabolic adjustment in the tissue leading to reduced oxygen demand. The brain of the fetus, the rate of the immature fetal brain is particularly low comparing to adult tissue. The precise and complex regulation of fetal heart rate by chemoreceptor and baroreceptor play an important role as adaptive mechanism. The fetal heart rate, after a period of bradycardia, return back to the baseline or even it is more than going back to baseline, it will go for tachycardia. And this is allow the cardiac output to contribute to the maintenance of the blood pressure and the peripheral vasoconstriction is a consequently reduced, permitting a great perfusion also of the peripheral organ. Adaptive mechanism in labor. During stress of labor, releasing of catecholamine like adrenaline and noradrenaline make fetal heart rate return back to baseline or even driving it into slightly tachycardia. The term fetus also has an increased anaerobic capacity due to the elevated storage glycogen in the liver and myocardium. Improved clearance of lactate from the fetal circulation, mainly by placenta, which act to wash out the acid metabolites by a well-maintained cardiac function. A reduction in the metabolic rate by reduced myocardial work, reduced heart rate, and decrease in the fetal activity, like reduced body movement, eye movement, breathing movement, as well as falling in the body temperature. What happens when there is a poor fetal oxygenation? The first phase of poor fetal oxygenation led to hypoxemia. What do we mean by hypoxemia? The oxygen saturation in the arterial blood falls, but the function of the cell and organs is usually not affected. In the second stage, when the hypoxemia persists, hypoxia will develop. And when hypoxia is developed, this is start of reduction of oxygen tension and subsequent and aerobic metabolism started mainly in the peripheral tissue. But the main organ is not affected. The third stage is the development of asphyxia. How the asphyxia is developed? Hypoxia and anaerobic metabolism is extended from the peripheral tissue to the central organ, the brain, the adrenal, the heart, and this organ will be deficient of oxygen, 
and due to reduced blood flow and hypoperfusion of that organ or the tissue may operate in combination with hypoxia and this will lead to necrosis and death of a cell in a main organ and this is the actual definition of asphyxia. At the level of the cell, when there is reduced in the oxygen supply, the aerobic metabolism will shift it to anaerobic metabolism. And this is anaerobic metabolism, there are the consequences of anaerobic metabolism, the drop in the pH, release of potassium ions, that in turn altering the ST segment and the T wave in the fetal ECG, as well as will lead to depletion of ATP, which is affecting the potassium-sodium bump, will lead to the sodium-potassium bump failure. And if there is a failure in sodium-potassium bump, this is will lead to accumulation of sodium and the calcium and water. And this is, we call it cytotoxic edema or water intoxication. Will lead to free radical nitric oxide release and cell death. Fetal hypoxia can be acute hypoxemia, chronic hypoxemia, acute and chronic hypoxemia. It was the total time of occlusion versus the time of recovery that determined the degree of metabolic acidosis. A frequency of one minute complete umbilical cord occlusion every five minutes allows for adequate time for recovery while more frequent occlusion as well as prolonged hypoxic episode may result in rapid development of metabolic acidosis. If one minute of severe umbilical cord occluded decrease the fetal base deficit by approximately 0.5 millimole per liter, regardless of the frequency of the occlusion. Causes of acute hypoxia what could cause acute hypoxia? Different things can cause acute hypoxia included cord prolapse, uterine rupture, which can occur in an unscarred uterus, placental abruption, maternal hypotension, and hyperstimulation. Acute hypoxemia in a normal fetus can be due to rapid descent of the head and can be in a form of deceleration of bradycardia and is uh, considered as a protective reaction as it's helped to reduce the myocardial work and thereby diminish the heart oxygen requirement. Or it can be secondary to tetanic uterine contraction as we see here and uh, it, it will lead to the interruptions in the maternal placental perfusion which secondary lead to transient reduction in uterine blood flow. Late deceleration can occur despite normal movement and normal long and short term variability in this situation. Acute in the top of chronic hypoxemia. Fetal hypoxia related to placental reserve. In abnormal fetus with compromised fetus, there is a relationship between the extent of loss of placental reserve and duration and intensity of uterine compression required to produce fetal hypoxia. The initial response to the hypoxia, the fetal aortic carotid chemoreceptor reflex will initiate this reflex and will lead to the impulses to the cardioregulatory center in proportion to the degree of hypoxemia. And this is, can lead to late deceleration where with normal variability. With persistence increased hypoxemia, the late deceleration can be prolonged late deceleration or bradycardia. This phenomena is known as fetal cardioregulatory decompensation and is thought to be a direct effect of severe acidosis and hypoxia on myocardial cell. Increased fetal blood pressure will lead to stimulate fetal baroreceptor and cardioregulatory center in the brain and it will lead to affect the SA node which lead to fetal late deceleration. Fetal hypoxia developed and increase will deteriorate and will lead to prolonged deceleration or bradycardia and cardiac arrest. Secondary response to persistent hypoxia. 
When persistent acute hypoxia continue, the fetus will respond by two compensatory mechanisms. The first is an immediate reduction in oxygen consumption achieved by shutting down all movement not essential for survival. And this is will lead to reduction or cessation in gross body movement and fetal tone, a reduction and cessation of the fetal breathing movement. This is will lead to reduction in the cortical activity in the brain and the reduction in the reticuloactivating system impulses to the cardioregulatory center and the reduction in the respiratory center impulses to the cardioregulatory center. Both of these will affect the cardioregulatory center which will lead to immediate loss of long-term variability. The other compensatory mechanism is generalized vasoconstriction conserving the blood for the vital organ, which is the heart, the adrenal, the brain, and the placenta. This redistribution of the blood in the uh, system of the fetus will lead to the aortic arch chemoreceptor stimulation. And this will lead to immediate increase in the short term follow by gradual decrease and then loss. Sustain acute hypoxia. With persistent uterine contraction, this is well blocked of venous drainage of intervillous space, but arterial perfusion will persist and oxygen concentration will be high. With a sustained contraction, with increased the contraction, arterial perfusion cease of intervillous space and oxygen fall. below 25% and hypoxia will develop. As a result of hypoxia, the viral receptor will be affected and it will send impulses to the cardioregulatory center in the brain, which will lead to afferent vagal, which lead to drop in the fetal heart rate, and afferent sympathetic, which is increased variability during and after the deceleration. With increased hypoxia, this leads to respiratory acidosis. Respiratory acidosis will manifest itself by fetal tachycardia, decreased long-term variability, reflex late deceleration with decreased amplitude. With persistent hypoxia, fetal asphyxia with oxygen below 50% will develop and metabolic acidosis will be the result. The metabolic acidosis will be manifested by central nervous system reflex will disappear which result in direct smooth late deceleration due to direct myocardial depression due to the hypoxemia. Which lead to smooth heart rate, absent late deceleration and large deceleration and bradycardia may develop and the last thing to occur is fetal death. Late deceleration absent and marked diminished long and short term heart rate variability associated with the progressive baseline tachycardia is among the most ominous of all fetal heart rate pattern and strongly associated with fetal asphyxia. Acute and top of a chronic hypoxemia Fetal hypoxia related to placental reserve. These fetus, they are abnormal. So in abnormal compromised fetus, there is a relationship between the extent of loss of placental reserve and the duration and intensity of uterine compression required to reduce fetal hypoxia. How to do umbilical cord blood sampling? Umbilical cord blood sampling you take 10 to 20 centimeter of umbilical cord is doubly clamped as soon as possible after the delivery. Blood is withdrawn from the segment into a 1 to 2 centimeter hibernized syringe and immediately transported on ice to the laboratory. Can be kept on ice for 60 minutes. On average, will-term infants 
have a mean umbilical artery pH 7.27 plus or minus 0.07. Base deficit. Metabolic acidosis resulting in excessive production of acid and decreased base, which is we call it base deficit, doesn't significantly change during respiratory acidosis. In both the study, the base deficit was the most important variable for predicting neonatal morbidity. A base deficit of more than 12 is a reasonable threshold for predictions of neonatal complication. If you look to after birth normal fetal cord blood pH and gases, you will find the venous arterial blood is ranging between 7.2 to 7.3 in the venous and 7.28 to almost the same in the arterial. The oxygen, it will be 28 to 32, whereas in the arterial, it will be 16 to 20. And the P-oxygen is 40 to 50. When the arterial is 40 to 50, it's the same. And base deficits, it is 0 to 5. And in the arterial, it is 0 to 10. Abnormal fetal cord blood pH and gas value. You can see that respiratory acidosis, metabolic acidosis, comparing the cord pH, both of them below 7.25. So the value which will differentiate it between respiratory acidosis and metabolic acidosis is the base deficit. Where respiratory acidosis is less than 10 milliequivalent per liter and metabolic acidosis it is more than 10 milliequivalent per liter. Abnormal fetal cord blood pH and gas value. You can see that respiratory acidosis, metabolic acidosis, comparing the cord pH, both of them below 7.25. So the value which will differentiate it between respiratory acidosis and metabolic acidosis is the base deficit, where respiratory acidosis is less than 10 milliequivalent per liter, and metabolic acidosis it is more than 10 milliequivalent per liter. Let us analyze the ABG step by step. The pH determining it is acidic or alkaline or normal. Normal range between 7.35 and 7.45, where acidic if it is less than 7.35, alkaline more than 7.45. The pH CO2 in the normal it is 35 to 45 millimeter mercury. If it's more than 45, it is respiratory acidosis. When the bicarb, it is 22 to 26 millimeter mercury, milli equivalent per liter. If it's metabolic acidosis, it will be less than 22 milli equivalent. The base excess, in mild cases, it is 4 to 8 millimole per liter. In moderate, 8 to 12. In severe, it's greater than 12. So we have to look all the parameter, the pH, the PCO2, the bicarb, to determine whether it is compensatory mechanism uh, occurring during this process. In pure respiratory acidosis, there will be high CO2 and normal bicarb and low pH. Where in pure metabolic acidosis, there will be low uh, uh, CO3, normal PCO2, and low pH. Criteria to define an acute intrapartum hypoxic event as sufficient to cause cerebral palsy. Essential criteria must meet all the four. One, evidence of metabolic acidosis in a fetal umbilical cord arterial blood obtaining at delivery with cord pH less than 7 and base deficit more than 12 millimole per liter. Two, Early onset of severe or moderate neonatal encephalopathy in infant born at 34 or more week of gestation. Three, cerebral palsy of spastic quadriplegic or dyskinetic type. And four, exclusion of other identifiable etiology such as trauma, coagulation disorder, infection condition, or genetic disorder.